हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर प्रदीप कुमार एम आर वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल केमिस्ट्री एट केली कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मसी हुबली इन दिस सेशन आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द टॉपिक एसिड्स बेसिस एंड बफर्स इंट्रोडक्शन एसिड्स and bases can be defined as per the following different theories that is first one traditional theory second one arrhenius theory third one bronsted and lowry theory fourth one lewis theory now we will see one by one theories which will define the acids and bases in a different way first traditional theory as per traditional theory acid can be defined as follows compound or a substance which converts blue litmus paper to red is known as acid some of the properties of the acid are they have sour taste they have a ph less than 7 acids react with bases to form salts and water example includes hydrochloric acid acetic acid next base compound or a substance which converts red litmus paper to blue is known as base the characteristic properties of base include they have a bitter taste they have a ph more than 7 bases react with acids to form salts and water examples include sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide here just i am showing the ph scale where we could see the different items which are shown at the top and below you could see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 that is 1 to 14 numbered scale which is known as a ph scale where we could see that exactly 7 if the ph is it will be a neutral ph and below 7 that is 1 to 6 if the compounds are having the ph they are considered as acidic in nature and if the compounds are having a ph above 7 and up to 14 they will be having basic property coming to the second theory that is arrhenius theory this theory defines acids and bases based on their ability to form ions when dissolved in water this is also known as arrhenius theory of ionization or electron dissociation theory coming to the definition of the acid as per arrhenius theory it is a substance which when dissolved in water yields hydrogen ion 
This is with an example of the HCl we are showing how does in an aqueous solution HCl dissociates itself into H plus and Cl minus ions. Now base. It is a substance which when dissolved in water yields hydroxide ion. Example sodium hydroxide. Here this is the equation. Sodium hydroxide that is NaOH when dissolved in water dissociates into Na plus and OH minus ions. Here in this pictorial representation I am just trying to show you how does acid and base when dissolved in water they will be dissociating themselves into the cations and the anions. So as you could see here with respect to hydrogen chloride when it is dissolved in a container containing water it will dissociate into chloride ion and hydrogen ion whereas with respect to the base that is the example what we have took here is sodium hydroxide when it is dissolved in the water it dissociates itself into Na plus ion and OH minus ion. Now limitations of Arrhenius theory. First one, the definitions are only in terms of aqueous solutions and not in terms of substance. Second one, it does not explain acidic and basic properties of substances in aqueous solutions. Third, Neutralization of acid and base in absence of solvent is not explained. Fourth, there was no explanation with respect to basic substances which do not contain hydroxide ion. Now, the third theory that is Bronsted and Lowry theory. Lowry in London and Bronsted in Copenhagen in 1923 simultaneously proposed definitions for acid and base. According to Bronsted and Lowry theory, acid is a substance that can donate a proton. Here with an example of the HCl we are showing that how does the HCl donates H plus and Cl minus ions here where Cl minus we are referring as a conjugate. Coming to the base as per Bronsted and Lowry theory, it is a substance that can accept a proton. Here is an example where we are just showing that HCl plus water, how does it will give H3O plus ion and Cl minus ion. So here we are trying to show that HCl is an acid and H2O in this case just like a base which when undergoes a reaction they will form H3O plus which is an acid and Cl minus a base. The fourth theory is Lewis theory of acids and bases. G. N. Lewis in 1923 proposed definition of acid and base in terms of electronic structure. As per Lewis theory, acid is a molecule or ion 
that can accept a lone pair of electrons. And similarly, base is a molecule or ion that can donate a lone pair of electrons. As we could see the two examples here which can give us the better explanation. So here we can understand how does an acid is accepting a lone pair of electron and how the base is able to donate a lone pair of electrons. Coming to the next concept that is strong or weak acids and bases. When an acid or base is dissolved in water, it will dissociate or ionize and the amount of ionization is dependent on the strength of acid or base respectively. A strong electrolyte is completely dissociated and a weak electrolyte is partially dissociated. Due to this reason, the degree of ionization is of great use to differentiate between strong acids and weak acids or strong bases and weak bases. Here are the few examples for strong acids, weak acids, strong bases and weak bases. Here I have quoted a few of the examples for your understanding. Here again it is an pictorial representation where I have just tried to give you the information with respect to strong acids and weak acids with examples of the acids and their molecular formula. Here I have given the list of some strong bases and weak bases. As it is already mentioned, the strong bases ionize completely or fully, whereas weak bases does not ionize completely or fully. They will be only partially ionized. Here are the few examples with respect to the strong bases and weak bases. Coming to the next concept, hydrogen ion concentration, pH and pOH. pH has several important applications in pharmaceutical practice. It affects the solubility of drugs that are weak acids or bases. Also it affects the stability of many drugs. So having got the knowledge regarding how does the pH can affect the solubility of the drugs. So we need to go depth into understanding what exactly the pH is and how it can be measured. Sorensen in 1909 devised a scale known as pH scale. 
Now coming to the definition of the pH. It is defined as the negative logarithm to the base 10 of hydrogen ion concentration which can be calculated with respect to this formula or the equation pH is equal to minus log 10 of hydrogen ion concentration coming to the POH it is defined as the negative logarithm to the base 10 of hydroxide ion concentration here is the equation for the same POH is equal to minus log 10 the concentration of hydroxide ion now we will be studying some of the official compounds which are acidic in nature and some compounds which are basic in nature let us start with the boric acid boric acid has got synonyms as orthoboric acid acdm boricum it has a molecular formula h3bo3 molecular weight 61.83 coming to the method of preparation it is prepared by the reaction of borax with sulfuric acid in presence of water this is the equation for the same coming to the properties it is a white crystalline powder it is odorless soluble in water as well as soluble in ethanol and glycerin coming to the assay of boric acid boric acid in aqueous solution is a weak acid and hence cannot be titrated directly against standard alkali however dissolved in glycerin water mixture it acts as a monobasic acid and can be titrated with standard alkali using phenolphthalein as indicator coming to the uses boric acid is used as local anti-infective agent it is also used to maintain acidic pH medium in medicament It is used in the preparation of buffer solutions. It is also used in ophthalmic preparation. It is used as a dusting powder. Also used in the preparation of ointments. Coming to the storage. It should be stored in well closed container in a cool place to avoid the degradation or decomposition of it. Next official compound is hydrochloric acid. Synonym Spirit of salt muriatic acid 
Acidium hydrochloricum. These are the some of the synonyms of that. That is hydrochloric acid. Coming to the molecular formula. Molecular formula for hydrochloric acid is HCl. Whereas the molecular weight is 36.46. Now method of preparation. It is prepared by the action of concentrated sulfuric acid on sodium chloride. Here is the equation for the same. Coming to the properties. It is a clear colorless fuming liquid with pungent odor. It is miscible with water, alcohol. Coming to the assay of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid being a strong acid is titrated by alkali metric method using sodium hydroxide as titrant and methyl orange as indicator uses hydrochloric acid is used as a pharmaceutical aid that is as an acidifying agent as a solvent in industry in the manufacturing of basic pharmaceuticals as a reagent in laboratory coming to the storage it should be stored in well closed container at a cool place next official compound is Strong ammonium hydroxide. Synonyms include ammonia solution, ammonium hydroxide, strong ammonium water, liquor ammonia fortis. Molecular formula is NH4OH. Molecular weight is 35.046. Method of preparation. Strong ammonium hydroxide can be prepared by mixing ammonium chloride with slaked lime. Here is the equation for the same. Coming to the properties, it is a clear colorless liquid with pungent odor and characteristic taste. It is miscible with water. Coming to the assay. It is assayed by acidimetric method. It is titrated against 1N hydrochloric acid using methyl red as indicator. Uses. It is used as alkalizing agent, as reflux stimulant especially in case of fainted person as vasoconstrictor as antacid as well as as a reagent in laboratory storage it should be stored 
in well closed container in a cool place next compound is sodium hydroxide synonym caustic soda soda lay molecular formula is naoh molecular weight is 40 method of preparation by treating sodium carbonate with lime water sodium hydroxide can be prepared this is the equation properties it is a white amorphous palette talkers as white amorphous palettes it is slight bitter in taste soluble in water alcohol and in glycerin it is deliquescent in nature assay it is assayed by using two indicators a weighed quantity of sample is dissolved in freshly boiled and cooled water and then titrated with 1N sulfuric acid using phenophthalein as indicator. Volume required is recorded. Then methyl orange indicator is added and titration is continued till persistent pink color is obtained. The total volume of acid required gives total alkali as NaOH. Uses used as alkalizing agent for preparation of soap as a common laboratory a reagent storage it should be stored in well closed container at a cool place coming to the next part that is buffers buffers do play a very vital role in the pharmaceutical preparations now let us see the definition of buffers. These are the compounds or mixture of compounds that by their presence in the solution resist changes in the pH upon the addition of small quantities of acid or alkali. Buffers are generally of two types acidic buffers, basic buffers. First, let us know acidic buffers. An acidic buffer is a combination of weak acid and its salt with a strong base that is weak acid and its salt with strong base which we also refer as conjugate base example acetic acid and sodium acetate hydrogen carbonate and sodium bicarbonate similarly hydrogen phosphate and sodium hypophosphate then formic acid and its salt a basic buffer is a combination of weak base and its salt with a strong acid 
that is weak base and salt with strong acid which we also refer as conjugate acid. Here are the examples which include ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride, ammonia and ammonium chloride, ammonia and ammonium bicarbonate, ammonium carbonate. Coming to the next that is buffer capacity. Here it is also important to know what exactly mean by buffer capacity. A buffer resists the change in pH of a solution upon the addition of a strong acid or a strong base or other agents that tend to alter the hydrogen ion concentration. So that is what we refer as a buffer capacity. So different buffers vary in their capacity to resist the change in the pH upon addition of the acids and alkalis. Buffer capacity is also referred as buffer index, buffer value, buffer efficiency or buffer coefficient. The buffer capacity is represented by beta and it is defined as the ratio of the increment that is amount added of strong acid or base to the small change in pH that is delta pH brought about by this addition which can be calculated by this formula that is beta is equal to delta A or delta B divided by delta pH. Now let us see Henderson Hasselbach equation. This equation is also known as buffer equation. For calculating pH of a acidic buffer solution, following equation can be used. So this is the equation down mentioned which can help us in calculating the pH for a given acidic buffer solution. The equation is as follows pH is equal to pKa plus log concentration of the salt divided by concentration of the acid. It helps in calculating the pH value of buffer solution if the concentrations of acid as well as that of the salt are known. Similarly, for calculating pH of a basic buffer solution, initially POH can be determined by the following equation that is POH is equal to PKB plus log of salt concentration divided by concentration of the base. Then by using the following equation pH of a basic buffer can be determined. PKW is equal to pH plus POH. pH is equal to PKW minus POH. Whereas finally the equation will be pH is equal to 14 minus POH. Buffer action. Mechanism of action of acidic buffers. Consider a buffer system of acetic acid 
which we refer here as a weak electrolyte and sodium acetate which we refer as a strong electrolyte. There will be a large concentration of sodium ions, sodium acetate ions and undissociated acetic acid molecules. On addition of an acid, what happens? Let us see. If a strong acid like HCl is added in acetic acid and sodium acetate buffer, the changes that will occur may be represented as shown in the following equation. The hydrogen ions yielded by the HCl is quickly removed as unionized acetic acid and the hydrogen ion concentration is therefore only slightly affected because acetic acid produced is very weak as compared to hydrochloric acid added. Now upon the addition of base. If a strong base like NaOH is added in acetic acid and sodium acetate buffer, the changes that will occur is shown in the following equation. The hydroxyl ions yielded by the NaOH are therefore removed as water. The supply of hydrogen ions needed for this purpose being constantly provided by the dissociation of acetic acid. Now let us see mechanism of action of basic buffers. Consider a buffer system of ammonium hydroxide which is a weak electrolyte and ammonium chloride which is a strong electrolyte. There will be a large concentration of ammonium ions, chloride ions and undissociated ammonium hydroxide molecules. On addition of an acid to the above buffer system, what happens? Let us see. If a strong acid like hydrochloric acid is added in ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride buffer system, the changes taking place are shown in the below equation. The hydrogen ions yielded by the HCl are therefore removed as water. The supply of hydroxide ions needed for this is constantly provided by the ammonium hydroxide. On addition of a base to the above buffer system what happens? Let us see. If a strong base like sodium hydroxide is added in ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride buffer system, the changes occurring can be shown in the following equation. The hydroxyl ions yielded by the sodium hydroxide are therefore quickly removed as unionized ammonium hydroxide and the pH of solution is only slightly affected. Now let us see the applications of buffers. First one is in case of biological systems. 
the ph of blood is maintained at about 7.4 by two buffer systems which are naturally present in the human body namely a primary buffers these are present in plasma the plasma contains carbonic acid and carbonate and acid or alkali sodium salt of phosphoric acid b secondary buffers these are present in erythrocytes which are oxyhemoglobin or hemoglobin and acid or alkali potassium salts of phosphoric acid due to the primary buffers and the secondary buffers the ph of the blood therefore is maintained at about 7.4 second in pharmaceutical preparation buffers are widely used in the field of pharmacy as ingredients in most of the pharmaceutical formulations in order to adjust the ph of the product to that required for maximum stability coming specifically with the different pharmaceutical preparations first let us see in parenteral preparations how the buffers play a role that is in case of injections in case of parenteral preparations ph should be considered carefully as large deviations of ph may lead to serious consequences the ideal ph of a parenteral product is 7.4 which is ph of blood the most commonly used buffers in parenteral products that is injections are acetate phosphate citrate and glutamate next comes in case of ointments and creams how the buffers are used topical products such as ointments and creams are also buffered to ensure stability of the formulation the most commonly used buffers in ointments and creams are citric acid and its salts another is phosphoric acid and its salts next comes the use of buffers in ophthalmic preparations that is the preparations which are used in the eye buffers are generally used in ophthalmic preparations to maintain the ph within the physiological ph range of lacrimal fluid the lacrimal fluid has a ph in the range of 7 to 8 but it has good buffering capacity and can tolerate preparations having ph values between 3.5 to 10.5 with little discomfort outside this range that is 3.5 to 10.5 increased lacrimation may occur with other complications the buffering agents most commonly used in case of ophthalmic preparations 
include borate carbonate and phosphates now let us see some commonly used buffer solutions in pharmaceutical preparations gifford suggested two stock solutions that is boric acid solution and monohydrated sodium carbonate solution upon mixing in various proportions these two stock solutions yielded a different strengths buffer solutions of ph value varying from about 5 to 9 sorensen proposed a mixture of the salts of sodium phosphate for buffer solutions of ph 6 to 8 the clark lubs mixtures and their ph ranges are enlisted here ph 1.2 to 2.2 can be obtained by the combination of hydrochloric acid and potassium chloride to get the ph in the range of 2.2 to 2. 4 hydrochloric acid and potassium hydrogen phthalate are used in the mixture for ph 4 to 6.2 naoh and potassium hydrogen phthalate mixtures can be used for ph 5.8 to 8 a combination of naoh and potassium hydrogen phosphate can be used for buffer solutions having a ph in the range of 7.8 to 10 hydrogen borate sodium hydroxide and potassium chloride mixtures can be used Thank you.